Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government. And, you know, this show is known for plain talk. People coming on and sharing their ideas and their thoughts. And there probably isn't a man who comes on here and is more straightforward in what he has to say than Councilperson Charlie Miranda. You're now chairman of the Tampa City Council, right, Charlie? Yes, sir, Bill. I, uh, I am for the last, uh, almost last year. I am so glad that you're able to come back. You've been with me a couple of times, and every time you bring something of extreme interest. This time, I'd really like to start off the show talking about water. Well, Bill, it's not about me. It's about the great moderator that you are and how you <laughs> run your show and how the easiness that you put your guests through. But uh, we talked about this years ago, you and I, and the water situation it will be one of the most important things facing not only the city of Tampa, but throughout the whole region and the state. When you realize uh, when you and I were young people, and I know I'm a little two or three months older than you, but... Uh, not a was, whole lot. Well, not a whole lot, but there was... Uh, uh, four or five million people. Now we're at 20 million people and water hasn't changed. It's the same commodity coming over the last 10 million years, but the population has changed. When that happens, you have a stress. That's why you have rising prices and gasoline and things of that nature. So water will become more costly because it's harder to find, harder to process. In Florida, because you see water everywhere, you get in your car, you see the water in the bay. You see the water in the lakes. You see water at the beaches. And you say, what is he talking about? We have all the water in the <laughs> world. lots of water. Right. There is lots of water. But you don't drink it. We only drink certain water that has to be produced by viable utilities, including the city of Tampa and Tampa Bay Water and Hillsborough County and those that have the facilities to do that. Uh, it is becoming more and more stringent on the rules and the application and how you do and how you service your community. Uh, the city of Tampa has made great strides. For instance, uh, not too long ago, we were losing 16% of the water produced at the plant through the distribution system somewhere because pipes were 50 to 100 years old. We have solved that to some degree by going to 40 miles a year. Now, due to budget constraints, we haven't done 40 miles a year this year, but I can tell you that it's down to about 8% loss. But so, you were the one that pushed for it in the first place to well, start we were, doing I, this, right? I'm not going to take the credit for that. That was an uh, area that uh, many of us worked on. Yes, I was one of them, but I wasn't. Everybody I know that's been involved has said, Charlie's the guy. If we hadn't got it going, it wouldn't have happened. Well, maybe they're looking for a fall guy. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that you have to have cooperation from other elected officials and, of course, the sure. mayor to get these things done. Uh, we did do a lot of headway. We did do some reclaim, and now I see where the administration is coming back on some more reclaim. Uh, certain things have to happen to fall in place for us to do that. Uh, it is very expensive to do these things, but you have to do it. There's no tomorrow on water. If you don't do it today, 15 years from now, you may not have what we need in resources of water. Charlie, you mentioned 40 miles a year. You gave me a statistic on how many pipes were down there, though. And 40 miles sounds like a lot until you hear that total statistic. What was that? If I remember, the number was about 22 to 2,300 miles of water lines under the city to of New Tampa York City, alone. you were saying. Yeah, we, we, we can go from here to New York. You can go to Buffalo, New York, and come back with the water lines that we have under the city if you stretch them all out. Wow. But it's uh, enormous. If any of those leak. I mean, it's, some of them are gonna, some of them are really old, I would assume. That's why you see cave-ins, that's why you see those holes that uh, you see them barricaded from time to time to do the work of replacement uh, that you need to do. We were spending so much money, it was it made the choice to replace instead of repair. And, and that gives uh, taxpayers the best exchange for their dollar value. Any idea how much cast iron pipe is still down there rusting away? I, I, I don't have an idea how much. I can tell you that we can do uh, 40 miles a year for the next 10 years, and we'd be getting maybe halfway. But That's it's 400 uh, well, of the 2,300. Yeah. But uh, we take a lot of things for granted. When we open that faucet, we expect water to come out uh, in a lot of countries. In fresh, clean water. That's right. Very, very the best water that comparable to any place in the world. However, a lot of countries don't have that. Oh, no. Uh, you look at the, some parts of the Middle East and 
some wars are fought over water. And you remind yourself of John Wayne and feeding the cows and blocking the river as it goes down through someone's property. All that is real. There's been water wars between Kansas and Colorado for the last hundred years. And we certainly don't want that to happen here. As much as I love India, and we were there and had a great time in India, I would recommend it to anybody. We had to drink bottled water the entire time we were there. Same in China. We drank bottled water. And most of the world, you drink bottled water when you leave this country because we're not used to that type of organism inside the water. Here, we take everything for granted. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, we create those false uh, pretenses because you don't have to worry about the water you drink in this country. How is water governed here in this area? Well, you have many layers. You have uh, the waters of the rivers and the lake belong to the state of Florida. And then you have swift mud, which this area here, Southwest Florida Water Management Area, they deal with 16 counties. Then under that, you have Tampa Bay Water that deals with three counties. And uh, then you have the individual uh, operators of their own water works. Tampa's one of them. But we have to deal with the permit that we have from Swift Mud that we can only take so much water out of the river on a daily average for the year. That doesn't mean that tomorrow you have an emergency and you need water and you take 100 million where our permits for maybe 80 some million. But it has to balance to that 80 some million on the 365 calendar. So it's governed very uh, strictly and it should be because it's a commodity that without that we can't survive. And again, I'm going to say it, whoever has water has prosperity in the years to come because you'll have growth and you have jobs and you have opportunity for your people. If you don't have that, you won't have any of that. I saw there was a big fight actually, it's getting outside of the city of Tampa, but from Georgia cutting off water and taking more in Atlanta. Right, and, that's and the stopping water. Stopping the flow coming down through Alabama and Florida. Alabama down to Apalachicola and the uh, areas that the uh, people that do harvesting of different crawfish shells and uh, things of that nature uh, needed to have the productivity and production of those uh, things that we eat. That's and because of salt. Correct. Intrusion. And we could have the same thing here, could we not, if we took too much water out of the ground? Co correct. And we've done that. We've gone from 160 million under Tampa Bay Water's guideline, and they've done a great, fantastic job, to under 90 million a day. So we have uh, done an excellent job in protecting the environment. And you can't live without a good environment. It has to balance out. And what we've done in water, long term, has been looked at throughout the country as one of the finest areas to live. We've been innovative. We've got the largest desal plant in the country that can produce 25 million gallons a day. Now, just think of what I'm going to say. Next year, hopefully, if everything works out through the courts, we'll start the repair work on what I call the big bathtub, the reservoir. 16 billion gallons with a B are in that reservoir. When that reservoir is drawn down for repairs, what happened if we didn't have the backup of the desal plant that can produce 25 million gallons a day? A what unit? is the overall, do you have any idea what the, the overall usage for the, the Tampa Bay area is? For I, on a daily basis, uh, I would take a guess about 280 million gallons a day, or 300 million, somewhere in that range. But I'm just taking a guess. Uh, the city of Tampa. So that are, plant could produce about an eighth. Yes, but then you have other sources that, uh, that can produce something else. And every little bit puts together is like building a model airplane. Somebody does the engine, the wings, the tail, and you put them together. It's the same thing that we do with water. What about reclaimed water? Isn't there some problems now I'm seeing the state is mandating or somebody's mandating the city of Tampa? You know, that's quite a water source for you is that, is that reclaimed water that you have. Reclaimed water is water that has been already used in the household or in a factory or in a business area. And it's cleaned up, taken to the Howard Curran plant where it is, uh, I wish I had a chance to take you and your staff to see this because it comes in in chunks and it leaves crystal clear. At the end of that plant production, uh, you have water that's 90% as good as any water in the world. And it's still not acceptable to drink here because of the water qualities that we have to compare with ourselves. And I agree with that. Reclaimed water is not to be taken in because of certain chemicals 
that are still there and certain things that are, that are not uh, for the health-wise uh, benefit. However, there's technology, if you've been to California, there's technology that's used in Texas. You talked about Atlanta, uh, Lake Lanier, the Atacuan River Valley, Israel, uh, South America, Central America, Singapore, you talked about China. All those areas have what they call indirect water use. That is that same water that we're talking about and the city of Tampa at times produces up to 70 million gallons a day that we only use a couple of million for reclaim, the rest is put into the bay. When that water becomes necessary, we will have to start using that product as a drinking water. It is purer than the water that we're producing now. It has not one living microbe in it. That water has to be done at that plant transferred over to the David Tippett plant. It has no taste at all. So it's got to be blended again and retreated again so you can get quality drinking water. And again, I'm going to say that water is much, much cleaner than any water that I know of. I was going to uh, say, it, it can't be any dirtier than the Alfaya River. Well, the Alfaya River and the Hillsborough River. I'm going to tell you like right. it is. The water department does a fantastic job in cleaning that product for delivery and safety of the welfare of the public. That's the main thing. Uh, you look at things today uh, throughout the world and they're doing things we should have done 50 years ago. But we take things for granted. Uh, we're used to living the good life and there's nothing wrong with a good life. But at the end of the day, we have to realize that there's a balancing system coming up soon and we better get ready. You know, interestingly enough, and I think the listeners should pay particular attention to this, for years, we've been told that if you have any pharmaceuticals left in the mm. house that you don't want, you should flush them down the toilet. Don't do that. But, but that's bad. That stuff gets into the water supply, and although it might be microbes, I mean, small, small amounts, if enough people do it, so anything that you don't have to put through the, the water system shouldn't go there, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, let nature be nature. When you flush those things down the toilet or down the drain or anywhere else, uh, there's a lot of living things that, uh, that eat things uh, just to eat them. And that's one of the things. They become infected. You eat the infected animal and you got a problem. But uh, all these things are things that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And the general public really doesn't realize in total what it is to run an efficient water department and sanitary sewers. One of the things, I don't know whether it's true or not, but it sounded like it was sense to me. He said, you flush antibiotics down the toilet and they become in the system where, as you said, these little things eat them. They became to a point where antibiotics don't touch them. That's your and they'd be antibiotic right. resistant and then we have another disease pop up. You, you have to live the life as normal and as environmental clean as possible. Well, let's move off of water a little bit. Okay. And I know you didn't get to go, but I, I do want to talk just a little bit about our reach out to uh, Cuba. I wanted to go, you wanted to go. I, I know a couple of our county commissioners wanted to go, or at least one of them wanted to go, so we talked about it on this program. And it didn't work out for the three of us, but tell me about the, the baseball games that went on between people from here and the people of Cuba? Well, this was something that was a uh, long time ago. Uh, I believe it was uh, 57 years ago when a bunch of kids from Cascaden Park under the guidance of a coach, uh, Andrew Espolita, who taught us baseball the way, it, the way it is, or the way it was. Now it's only about home runs. But when you uh, get down to it, uh, of all the things I've ever tried to do, and I accomplished a few, uh, that trip to Cuba in 54 is still the most memorable one in my life. When we first boarded an aircraft, uh, there was 12 kids and about six ch chaperones, and I saw that engine turn on, and I saw those <laughs> flames coming out of that DC-6. I told myself, what in the world am I doing on this airplane? And that thing rumbling, and the wings were moving, and I said, oh, my God. But anyway, that's, uh, we came back safely and got there safely. Um, the games were exciting. Uh, the Cubans are fantastic ball players. Uh, they practice longer and harder than anyone I know. Uh, so when this team got together, about seven of the original uh, 12 got together 
And some of us, again, because of the problems that we have at our age, couldn't make it. I was one of them. And uh, we, we had a good pitching staff. Not that I was on that staff, but we had a good pitching staff. I was not on the staff. Uh, and both of the starters, the one and two guys, got hurt. So they went with a wounded uh, staff. They did their best. And guess what? They played six games. They won three, lost two, and tied one. Which so, is better than some of the teams uh, from up north that went down there and played. You're absolutely right. <laughs> one of the teams from up north went, and they came back with an 0-6 record. <laughs> so I was expecting this team to maybe win one or two games. Uh, the team won the first game, but the second game, uh, they didn't face people over 60. They faced people 45 and younger. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I knew that was coming, and I, I had a pep talk with them, and I told them exactly what to expect. And it happened that way. But the, the fellows that went, I'm proud of them. They gave their heart. They gave the most. Uh, some came back wounded. There's a picture that I saw of one of our shortstop getting hit right under the arm. And he had from here to here all black and blue, and he still went out and played every day. So uh, these, uh, these guys are really uh, good ball players. They were much better some time back. Uh, some of you played for the world champions, Clearwater Bombers. Wow. Uh, so we had a good squad, and uh, some of them want to go back. So uh, if this thing could get range again and go back uh, November or December next year, you can go as a team photographer. Uh, you're a little big for the bat boy position. <laughs> but we'll, we'll I don't look know if I can bend you. over and get them. That's big we'll problem. look at you as a team photographer. <laughs> I, uh, I understand you sent down some shoes and balls and bats and things to the Cuban youngsters. The team was very much involved in that. We uh, uh, lucky enough to find, uh, of all things in Hillsborough County, caps that said Cuba on them, red, white, and blue. And uh, so many of them went to the Cuban team. The Tampa team started the game with hats like theirs, but different colors still had Cuba on it. And after the first half inning, they stopped, signed the team, and gave it to the opposing players, and then they put on the Tampa t hat on. So they uh, very well received. Uh, they had a shirt that said Tampa. That shirt was given uh, to the ball players, and some of the shoes went. I still have about 20 pairs of shoes in my living room, so I'm, I'm waiting to see how I can take them down and distribute them. Yeah, I, I, just for my listeners, I, I try to tell you where I'm coming from when I ask questions. Be honest with you, I've been to India not too long ago. I spent two weeks in China this last year. I've traveled all over the world, and the U.S. government will let me travel to a little country 90 miles off my coast. It just aggravates me to death. I'm sorry, I know there are people out there that, oh, we're not going to do that. But I think it's wrong when we talk about freedom that I can't travel where I want to travel. Well, Hodges, you're working your way into the lineup and the way you stand up for yourself. You'll have it a bet for it. <laughs> The cleanup man, but uh, like I said, I'm we, a pretty good batter. Well, I, it's feeling that you know. Most of us have problems running. The rest we can do, but uh, we did have some good games here in the city. We played the Jefferson High School baseball team fathers, we were in the mid 40s. Uh, we played the Tampa Firefighters, and the Tampa Firefighters did beat us eight to six. Uh, Jefferson, we tied. We lost one game, uh, seven to six, and won the second game, three to two. Then we played the Manatee County Champions, and we won that one 14 to 4, if I recall. But there's been other games that were very close, and I think we played six exhibition games, won three and lost three. But I made sure that every team we played was much younger than we were, because I knew what was going to happen once they <laughs> got to the island, and I was right. Bigger they might run a ring or two in on you, huh? Well, I think more than one or two, but uh, <laughs> they, they don't want to lose. Well, let's jump back now to the city of Tampa. I just had Richard Wainio on, the port director, and he's very, very encouraged with what he sees in the port and the expansion. Didn't realize there were 5,000 acres now. We're 10 times as large as Miami and land area. How do you see this working for the city of Tampa? There is no doubt in my mind that uh, because of the cohesiveness of the governments and the port and the airport and the area, you know, it wasn't too long ago that uh, people that come to Tampa think it was always like it is now, beautiful Channel Side, beautiful Harbor Island. None of that was there. There was a citrus nitrate place with a t uh, <laughs> thing about 60 feet in the air full of nitrate and dust everywhere. And look at it now. 
Uh, nice big condo buildings. Uh, most of them are 85, 90 percent filled, but not not greater than that. The port is going to be the aquarium. The aquarium. That's You're gorgeous. Absolutely right. Look at the parking garage in Channel Side. It looks like a museum from the outside. It's beautiful. When you look at these things and you see what's coming, the future of Tampa has just become to unfold. And I always tell this. Uh, I, I think I told you before we had a little cup of coffee back there, I said, an individual in politics, call it a politician or elected official, only sees it his or her way, I say is blinded in both eyes, because the future of this area is just starting to unravel, and the big things are coming. Uh, this area will be one of the highest, most producing income area in the state, and it's going to be a great place to live in the area with Sarasota, St. Pete. Uh, Clearwater, every city, Dunedin, every city has something to offer that's different from the other. And so you work together as a team, and these things come to a better place to live like what we live in. You know, in the again, in the interest of self-disclosure, I don't live in the city of Tampa. I live in Sun City Center. I live near Apollo Beach. And I hear a lot of people, well, I don't want to see them spend money on that in Tampa. But, but people don't fly into Apollo Beach. They don't fly into, they fly into Tampa. This is our central core. If the core goes rotten, the rest of us will all suffer. You're absolutely correct. Something has got to, you might have all the blood in the body you need, but if you don't have a heart, you're not going to last long. And that's what you just said. In, in a much that's a more, very, that's a much better way of saying it. You know, it's uh, you got to have a place that pumps and pumps so everybody can get their piece of the bloodline and continue to live and prosper in this area. When you look at the school system, when you look at things of that nature, uh, people move down to anywhere or they relocate uh, anywhere because of school, education, the livable conditions of, a, of an area. And it's just not the city of Tampa, it's the whole area that really counts. And uh, yes, Tampa has one or two things more than others, but so what? They have peace and quiet. We are an urban center. They have something we have more population. And, and it's things like that that are give and go that makes a city a place to go and a place to visit. Well, it's just like being in a boat. If it leaks at one point, you've got trouble. You're not Everybody joking. Everybody better start to bail. You're not joking. But uh, Tampa has just been growing by leaps and bounds. In the Hillsborough County area, it's projected to go over 400,000 uh, new people moving in in the next 15, 20 years. Really? One of the highest... Uh, growth uh, in the area. So uh, we're looking forward to other counties around us are stand still because they're already built out. We're not. So these things we better have plans for and you better have the system in place and without water you can't have that. You're right. And, and actually they're starting to move back into Florida now. We're having yes. a net increase again. So the economy must be on its way up. I think the economy uh, is on the way up. And I think the, uh, the individuals that live in cities, and not only this city, uh, are proud of what they've done for their family and how hard they work, and all they need is an opportunity to find a, a better job. Let's talk about the, uh, the convention coming into town. Maybe we got two minutes, but let's talk a little bit. That we, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about all of these people coming into town, the Republican National Convention. To me, it's like, a vegetable soup. It has enough of ingredients for everybody. Uh, you're going to have dissidents. You're going to have 15,000 people in the media, news media here. You're going to have people from all over the world looking at the, what a place to shine, opportunity to shine, I should say, in the city of Tampa that we would never have gotten. The economic impact on this area will be greater than any Super Bowl, maybe five or ten of them put together. Really? Because you're going to have that many people here staying here for the period of duration, and usually they stay two or three days later. Places like Bush Gardens, like Laurie Park Zoo, like the aquarium, will all be at record high attendance for the, and the year trolleys. 2012. I mean, let's face it. And in fact, it's so big that uh, more than likely we're going to uh, take a week off from city council uh, to let the people in, and see what they're doing, enjoy uh, the same flavor that they're enjoying. How many people are expected to come in for that? Not, not including national news media and, and protesters, but the actual attendees. I don't know what the actual number is, but it'll be tens of thousands. Uh, Do we have enough hotel rooms? 
Between the area, yes, uh, because we do uh, area work with St. Pete, Clearwater, and they'll get to see everything. They'll get to see the beaches, they'll get to see the city, they'll get to see Apollo Beach on an occasion. They may go want to take a boat out of Apollo Beach and do whatever they want to do. But the area will be well visited. Disney World, they'll have a lot of things to do. They'll be happy, and guess what? They'll come back another time for vacation. The streetcar, when you go to San Francisco, you don't only talk about the 49ers, you talk about the streetcar. Yeah, go on the streetcars. And, and, and you have things of that nature. When you go to New Orleans, you have the same thing. When you come to Tampa, you're going to have the same thing. So it's good for us. we got to be very courteous to the people. And uh, they'll come back and spend their money, and that's what it's all about. I think our streetcars, one thing I'd like to see is more at the other end of it. Well, you're right. It's because like expand. in New Orleans, you get on the streetcar, you go out to the zoo. And there's something, you know, there's nice things to see along the way. Many years ago, it used to run from Ybor City all the way to Ballast Point, all the way to West Tampa, all the way down Florida Avenue to Lime Ball. It takes time to get that done because it was much costlier to rebuild than it was to leave sure. alone. I would really like to see us have a, a street, well, I'd like to see us have a light rail system. I was really disappointed when the governor put the kibosh on a light rail from Orlando to here. In my time in life, what I have left, I'm going to see you hit the Cuban picture when you're, I'm going to film that one myself <laughs> so we could air it on this TV show sometime next year. That's a promise I'm making to the people. I'm going to see you, Hodges, batting fourth uh, for the Tampa team and, and see what happens when he throws you a nice fastball and then a curveball after that. Well, me standing there watching, <laughs> I, I was a softball referee for almost 15 years. So I've got a lot of time out there calling balls and strikes, but it's a whole different thing to stand there and calling a ball and strike and watching to hit that ball, especially fast pitch. It, it'll be nice. It'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Believe me, it'll all come back. It's like riding a bicycle, just well, very slowly. I fell <laughs> off last time. I <laughs> Charlie, you're always a wonderful guest. I, I really appreciate you and Mary, your uh, secretary, administration aide, uh, she is such a special person. She's been so helpful to me down there in the council. Well, thank you very much. She does the work, and I take the credit. <laughs> well, that's the way a good aide is. They make things look great. I learned something in business. If you want to be successful, put yourself in a position where people around you are smarter than you are. Well, I thank you so much for being on the program. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spotlight on Government. I'm Bill Hodges. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. And we'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And Charlie, thanks again for being with us. And again, pass my thanks on to Mary for me, please. Thank you, sir. <laughs>